Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Producers Guild conversation with the creative team behind Uncle Frank. We'd like to thank our friends at Amazon for all of their help in making this Q&A possible. It is my pleasure to introduce our moderator today, Yori Henley. Mr. Henley was named one of Variety's 10 producers to watch and is best known for his longtime collaboration with Sofia Coppola. Their work together includes The Beguiled, Somewhere, and The Bling Ring. Their most recent collaboration on The Rocks is the first co-production between Apple and A24. Headley produced Mir Miranda July's film, Kajillionaire, and his other credits include 20th Century Women, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and The Lighthouse. I will turn it over to you, Yuri, to introduce our panelists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, normally, I, I was saying normally this would be something where we were on a stage and we had just all watched the movie and then you would come out and then everyone would be standing. So if we're watching this at home, we can just stand and sort of clap for the filmmakers here because I, I was so deeply moved by this film. Um, it was, uh, I could probably spend an hour talking to each of you. Um, so we'll try to keep it, you know, try to keep it limited. Um, but yeah, I was really, I, I really so enjoyed it. it. It's hard, I have a, an idea of how I'm supposed to watch films and I'm supposed to watch them in a theater completely uninterrupted. And in this particular case, I was watching it on my laptop. I was watching it on a media silo site. I was just sort of, you know, and none of that mattered because I was so deeply moved by it. I was so engaged emotionally. And it just, it's really a wonderful film. And I'm so happy that it's coming out at Thanksgiving, I feel like it should be mandatory viewing for all families, uh, you know, especially now. I kind of felt like with Amazon, it should just be, the algorithm should just be for everyone, right? So if you've got anything, if you're watching something or buying something, you should just automatically be fed this film because I just so, <laughs> I so liked it um, and enjoyed it. It was just deeply moved by it. I have a lot of questions. So. I want to start with Alan. Um, how did this whole, how did this project come about? How did it start for you? You know, it started actually 30 years ago when I, um, I, I was living in New York City and I took a trip home to my hometown of Marietta, Georgia to come out of the closet to my mother. And she surprised me by saying, well, I blame your father for this because I think he was that way too. Um, which I don't even know if it's true or not, because he was already dead at that point. Um, so I never had a chance to talk to him about it. But then later on in that same trip, we were driving around North Georgia and we drove past a lake. And she said, very nonchalantly, that's where Sam Lassiter drowned. I said, who's Sam Lassiter? I've never heard of this person. She said, he was a real, real, real good friend of your daddy's. And uh, I found out later that my dad had accompanied Sam's body on a train back to their hometown of Asheville, North Carolina. And so it just sort of opened this window um, in my brain of what if, what if that was true? I'll never know if it was, um, but what if it were, what might, have, what might that story have been? And it sort of percolated in my head for 25 years. And then four or five years ago, I sat down to write a script and Uncle Frank is what, what came out. Wow. It's so, so wild. It, people, say, people say it's autobiographical and it's like, no, it's maybe might be a fictional version of something that may have happened to my father. I don't know. <laughs> The script, you mentioned the script. It's first of all, it's odd. I have relatives in Marietta, Georgia. I know Marietta. I haven't been there for years. Uh, my dad was from Nashville. My whole family moved to Marietta, and it's now reminding me that I should reach out to them. I have not wow. actually been there for many, many moons. Um, I, uh, you mentioned the script, um, and I just found one of the kind of magic tricks in it was that it really, I, I really kind of want to read it because I, I'm so curious about, it starts off in a way that you very much think it's Beth's story. You know, she's the narrator and you think it is, and it's not that it's not her story, but all of a sudden it does this sort of sleight of hand and it never feels forced. It just works so well. Was, this, was that sort of structure always there or did that sort of change in the edit? How did that storytelling, how did that, how did that uh, change for you? Uh, as, as the writer-director? 
Um, that basic structure was always there. Uh, I, I remember early on in the process um, when we were we were shopping the script around, some people would ask the question, is it Beth's movie or is it Frank's movie? And um, one of my favorite movies of all time and, and kind of a weird offhand inspiration for this is To Kill a Mockingbird. And my mm -hmm. question is, is that Scout's movie or is it Atticus's movie? It's kind of both. Um, yeah. And so I was hoping that I might be, you know, that it, that I guess that was sort of what I was unconsciously modeling uh, Uncle Frank on in terms of it being sort of not quite clear whose movie it is. But it worked so well. I never, I was never lost in it at all. It just was this nice sort of sleight of hand where I just felt like it was all part of the same thing. It worked really, really, really well. Um, Peter, I want to get to you. I was so thrilled that you were going to be part of this panel because I so enjoy your performance. That's another magic trick where all of a sudden, 20 minutes in, this wonderful force comes on the screen. And it was just these night, it's like every time you came on, it was just, it was really wonderful. Uh, but I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to wait and I'm going to, I'm going to throw this to, to Michael. Michael, how did you, uh, how did you meet up with, how did you come about working on the project? Um, and yeah, sorry. Sure. Well, it was really, it was Alan and Peter really, um, you know, in this small world. And I think other people watching this will know it's, you know, um, filmmakers who we have relationships with for a long period of time. And I still remember when I first read Alan's play, Five Women Wearing the Same Dress, and we've known each other for a long time, or I still remember where I was when I read American Beauty and then following on and on. And when Alan said he had this new script and um, that he and Peter wanted to make, um, it really was, and I think I'm excited for you to read the script because the movie, you really felt it on the page. and. Yeah it really had such classic bones to it. And I think what I've been reflecting on a lot lately is we've all had a lot of time to reflect on things is, you know, you never can tell the future, you never know what it's gonna be. And this was a very classic story that hadn't been made in a long time. You know, that whether it had gone out of fashion or people forgot about this kind of storytelling, et cetera, um, but the script really became a chain letter because when you, when we saw how this was coming together and here's what we have to make it, here's what we don't have to make it, it was going to have to be, um, as we know, like that miracle of things coming together. And that's where the script really started it. And Alan and Peter also understanding as filmmakers, it's gonna get made, like, here's what we have, here's what we don't. If we don't start making this now, we got to do it and and who's our dream cast and then as you get to see in the movie they said yes because they read the script and then they met with the guys and similarly to make a movie like this i needed a partner in crime so you know having jay it's what it's one of those pieces that um we all know that all the pieces of the puzzle are important on this one the braid really is what we think made it work, you know, from making a movie about a family going home to what's the right home for the movie, all of those different pieces had to fall um, into place. But starting with the story and the script, and I think Alan and Peter, we really did have a solid foundation to build upon. Clearly you mentioned um, uh, the, the partnership with Jay. Jay, I, for you, how, I just have a couple of questions uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you, Jay, but, but um, one was like, wh where did you, um, how long did it take you guys to shoot? You had mentioned, sorry, Michael, you had said that uh, what you did and didn't have, you know, and I imagine in many cases, there were a lot of conversations about what you, what you didn't have and how you, maybe you had to adapt. And I just found this film to be, um, I'm not quite sure what you guys made it for, but I felt like it felt like a much bigger production than it was. <laughs> like the cinematography was beautiful. The costumes were exceptional. The, uh, the production design was wonderful. All, the picture cars, all that stuff. And I guess my, my question, Jay, is like, it felt like everybody had worked on this, had worked on movies before. There was a shorthand with everybody. What was sort of that process like? Was that true or were you guys just lucky? Like how did that work out? with the alchemy of sort of making the movie itself? If there's a question in there anywhere, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I got the, I got the script. Um, 
Uh, I read it. Uh, I call. I, I immediately met. I think I met with Alan and Peter the next day. I talked to Michael, um, and there was just this chemistry, this rapport, this easy. It just we just all fit personality wise. We were laughing. We were talking. You know, we, I mean, for me to pick up on something that you said, Michael. Um, the I just love that that. In, a, in that classic sense that we were going to be able to make a movie that had ensemble scenes with a family and these amazing actors together sort of in the moment and doing something that you just don't get to do in film in film or you don't like it just doesn't come to you it doesn't, it doesn't and if you set out to make it like it, people, it's sort of like you know and it's like anti like the history is designed almost like you know stop that from happening as, as, a, as a feature and and, and also the, this this nice transference between um bath and 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 frank in a way and you never lose either one throughout either's part it, it, and 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 um and yeah so we, so we we sat we met we i don't know i think we it just clicked i mean michael and i had known each other and I mean, I learned so much working with Michael on this and I had wanted to work with Michael, you know, um, and um, we, when we and, and we brought Stephanie, Stephanie Muir into it, who, who I've known since she, you know, since I guess when I was assistant in New York. So that would that I'm not going to put a date on that because it's probably going to live on YouTube, as we were told. Um, but but um, we've known each other for a long time and I could trust her. And I think what came out of this first and foremost with the spirit of collaboration. And a lot of people say this, like a lot of people say, talk about like, oh yeah, it was so, so collaborative. Thank you to the director. I mean, in this case, like it, that was real. Like this was a very much, um, uh, uh, not just a matter of generosity from Alan. It was a matter of the essence of how the, how we were going to make the movie. Um, and, um, and, and because the screenplay itself was alive within our minds, we understood what it was. It was so clear to us that it became a matter of how to, you know, that engendered the kind of trust that you need to sort of have a shorthand where it's like, okay, the practical aspects of this need to be able to support that film. How are we going to do that? How are we going to accomplish this? And um, each one of us, like, rolled up our sleeves in different ways. And I could probably list off, you know, more than a handful, uh, including um, the wig for Peter, and like all, like just all the like little tiny things that, you know, go into making a film um, that were transformative for it, you know, like having the house, um, finding the lake and, and, and having someone as adapted, you know, squeezing uh, every nickel and dime out of a stone like Stephanie was, you know, and, and just, but, 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 but what, what we all ultimately clicked into was this is going to get made. Like, it wasn't like, we're going to make this sometime in the next two years. It was like, we're making this in March and it's November. We have the holidays between now and March. We need to have everything financed and ready to go to land in our location, wherever that might be in February. You know, and so so we jumped into scouts together. We were in the van, you know, sharing sharing stories, meeting our crew, um, some of whom Michael had worked with before, who were superstars, and finding out who and who would be on our film in North, ultimately North Carolina, um, which which was uh, I think, in, you know, symbolically like the kind of the state of the union. Um, it, it it really does bring that immediate relevance to this story when you're when you're in North Carolina, not because of its divisions, but because of how diverse people, the, the state actually is and the different ideology, like values that people hold that are part of your crew. It was it was really a, a, a amazing experience. Um, and going back to what just what I was saying about Alan is like, Alan invites in that collaboration with everyone you know, with everyone, um, all of the crew on set, like across the board through the, through, and, it, and, it, and, it, and so like the film itself, you kind of have the, you, you know, from the outside, you're looking at it, you're like, well, or like the production, you're like, this is a small, tiny little room we all have to squeeze into, but then when you get into it, it's actually quite expansive. And it has, and it had that feeling on set where you, you were like, wow, we got through this much, you know? And, and it was kind of because it was a, it was a little bit of a, a, you, form of play together, you know, hard work, but 
we, we, we were just astonished with what was coming, what we were seeing before us as we were making it. We were so happy with the performances were just like invigorating and inspiring for everybody. It felt like there was real, real chemistry there, clearly on and off the camera. Uh, I mean, on, yeah, on and off camera. But it, I think so, yeah. And, and it's fun when you, you had mentioned the partnership, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to also partner up. Movies are difficult to make and you do have to kind of will them um, and you have to kind of just say, we're making it. And, and then in doing that, it creates a momentum. There's something really exciting about that. One thing that's tough during these times right now in similar the way we're doing this Q this uh, this this uh, conversation is that when you talk about getting in a van together and going out and making the movie, I so miss that now. You know, I yeah, so yeah. Really, everything now. Zoom has its advantages in some ways. You can be very efficient, right. but miss the tactile. The the you know movies are often made you know in vans and in elevators and in conversations that you're having you know, together. And uh, that part of it is, is a bit tricky as we adapt into these new ways. Speaking of chemistry though, Peter, okay. How, you, you come into this movie in, at, at, what is it? 15 minutes in, 20 minutes in, something like that. And it's just, it's wonderful. From the moment that door opens, I'm like, who is this? And then thankfully again, like the, the story, we're now, we're now into, um, getting a lot of you in a wonderful way. And I, the chemistry, I guess, between you and, uh, and Paul, um, how did that build? Did you have a long, reserve, wrong, a long a rehearsal process? I, I so believed you um, as a couple and I just thought your chemistry was wonderful. And how did that build? Um, well, I mean, you know, a lot of names were pitched for the role of Frank and uh, a lot of like A-listers and whatnot. My concern was if we get a star for the role, it would become about the star and not the role, not the character itself and his journey. So once uh, Paul was pitched, I thought, okay, that's great. That's an actor's actor. He's just such a consummate actor, professional, knows his craft, knows his work. We had two days of rehearsal over the weekend before shooting, starting to shoot on Monday. And, uh, and we just had to do it. We both know what we were doing and uh, we were both prepared, but uh, nothing off camera happened. I mean, nothing at all. It was just like, you know, just doing it. And luckily it came across that way. Do you, you remember, know? it really did. Do you remember what the first scene you all did together? What that was? Uh, the fight scene. <laughs> Get out of here. The that fight. was my actually that was my first day my first scene is like the fighting and I, I was like I was so mad I was seething in anger because and you and you know this is the nature of filmmaking I mean you can't you can't choose about what goes first and it's per location and the motel was the first week and uh, and you know it's just like hitting that point that high pitched in the relationship that that is that was not easy I mean we were both kind of tense both of us both Paul and I because it was tough and we we're just get trying like getting to get the hang of it of rhythmically what the movie is about because we had the minuscule budget we had like it, it was rough it was actually rough it was like guerrilla filmmaking and that's that's part of why it turned out to be that way because it was labor of love and everybody wanted to put 100 percent and uh our dp was there uh, helping us w w how to shoot it and uh and uh, that was the first scene. I do remember that. And, you know, we were all bruised and banged up next day. But it just <laughs> didn't really, it didn't really matter because it felt, okay, we earned it. You know, this is what it takes. And uh, yeah. And then, you know, it's like your favorite scene you're saying when I first appeared. That was like the last day of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, to think about just it. Really that good. door. Yeah, because often you're not able to, you know, like you said, for all the reasons you had to do the scene and the thing. Sure. But, I mean, way as you mentioned all of that you're so natural then by the time we when we first introduce you right when you're first introduced you're like oh you've you've been wally for so long and then also in a strange way the fight scene bonded you in a weird way maybe you know yeah. like like trial by fire you know intimate. i mean the fight scene is intimate actually it's not it's not you know when you have a fight with someone and it's intimate that you you get to reveal a lot of yourself and and what's going on and both of us did feel that i mean uh, there was definitely a, a certain amount of uh, vibration between me and paul in a very subtle way i would imagine that worked out it really did work out it really did work yeah. out um 
you had mentioned the shoestring, which we've all been there with that with that shoestring. Um, I never felt that when I watched it. And I'm wondering, Alan, I, I noticed that um, it felt like the blocking of these scenes, the way uh, your characters sort of inhabited these spaces, um, there was an elegance to it and it was, it was very classical and it's hard to do on a shoestring. What was your process of blocking and working with your actors on set? Um, it was, I, I did, you know, um, during prep, I did a lot of work with Khalid Motaseb, uh, the amazing cinematographer. Um, and, and we had, we had some scenes sort of pre-blocked, but for the most part, I, I, I don't like to do that because I like for actors to, to do what comes to them naturally. Um, I'm not sure that I, I, I can take a lot of credit for it because my sort of my approach to directing definitely on this film was to to hire the best people I could um, and then get out of their way and let them do what they do. I'm not a cinematographer, you know, I'm not a production designer. I so I just try to get let give people as much leeway as they can and then step in when I feel like things are going off in an opposite direction. Um, I remember thinking as I was watching um, on the monitor, I remember thinking that, that, that there was a kind of elegance to the blocking and the way that the, the, the movie unfolded and it felt very natural and at the same time, um, beautiful, you know, uh, really, or it really felt organic, but uh, I, I would have to say a lot of that credit goes to Khalid and to the actors as, as well, because Alan, when you say that, would you would you think, you know, I mean, would you say too that we had a young crew, right? I mean, we were sort of the oldest. These were youthful. Yeah. This was, you know, this was we and and you were embracing working not 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 by age, but seeing something in there. You know, and I think Michael, we 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 were all focused on like we we were finding people that were sort of earlier on in their careers, and um and they really were able to you know. Um, show us what they could do, or show the world what they could yeah. do in this movie in a way. Um, wouldn't, uh, right? I mean, that, that makes sense. Yeah, because right? I've only done one film before this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was this you, was Alan, because I think this is important for people who are watching this because, you know, we all do this. We go through the list of what are the credits, what have they done, blah, 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 who's worked with them. And Khalid, that was, that, that really was, we had a number of people who loved the script and had long lists of credits. And you said, you know what? I really think that he cinematically is gonna open it up. It's gonna feel different. And you really mm -hmm. push that with your gut. You really- Alan Peter both. That. And, Peter, and Peter. I remember when you yeah. Peter, were like, <laughs> this is the way to go. And yeah. we, and it, and it's so nice to hear. And thank you for saying that you're, because it's, it, it did give the film scope. And that's the trick of all of us who, when we try to pull things off, for a low budget, nobody gets any points for, yeah, well, we made it, or a low budget. It has to have richness and a world and scope. And that's all of these little decisions, you know, really mattered. And that's where Jay and I were so impressed with, you know, Alan and Peter, that instinctively you knew it. You knew that was the way to go. <laughs> Similarly with Megan, who did the clothes, who's absolutely yeah. brilliant. She's brilliant a star. and she's I hate star. saying this because I wish we could all you know keep her phone number. She's so talented. <laughs> and, um, similarly, um, I had made a film where we again we had done the opposite. We got with somebody with a lot of credits, and it just clearly wasn't working. And a friend of ours says on this previous film, like meet Megan. And I thought, all right, well, this is a flyer. She was so unbelievable, and that is the fun of the discoveries on movies like this which all of us know and hopefully people know is you, you don't go by if you just go by the credits you don't know it's really like who is inventive and gonna dream big with you and um and, and that's what alan and peter i think was inspiring to everybody that 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 exactly. was the yeah. philosophy it wasn't you know it's always it important to me too the meeting when you sit down and you meet with somebody um is you can really get a sense of there, there's an element to it that has nothing to do with the work that they're going to do or they're going to bring to it. It's how, how is their, what is their energy like? What is their enthusiasm about this project? What, what feels like natural? Like we're already sort of speaking the same language. Um, when they talk about the script, did it, are, are they, 
are they being genuine? Are they being authentic about their feelings about it? Or are they just saying what they think you want to hear? It's yeah. always, it's always, to me, it's always, be, it, things become very clear in the meeting. Um, it's always wonderful too, when you give someone that opportunity to find those discoveries on or off the camera, and then people rise to the occasion or they even exceed the expectation. It's really, it's really exciting. And then of course, you can never get those people ever again, because then they become, <laughs> exactly. they, they become your friends and then you can never hire them. And you're like, oh, well, come over to my house and have dinner. That would be nice. I'm just gonna see you in town. <laughs> Let's work together again in the next decade. I could really keep going. I, I think we're probably going to get tapped out soon, but I have a question uh, again for, for uh, uh, it's probably for, for Alan. Um, the scene of reading the will, that scene, I mean, it is, if I had read that, my head would have exploded. When I watched it, I almost felt like, did he have this idea to have this scene and then he built a movie around it? You know, like it just, it was such an epic moment. And you really had me thinking it could go in different ways. And then when it lands in this place, it's, I, I was just so moved by, how did, did that come about just in the story as you were as you were outlining and breaking it out? Or how did that evolve, that moment? Because it's such a, oh, it's just such a gut punch. It's, um, you know, my process is is a little mysterious to me. I, I It's not really, thought out um it just it's very organic and it just it that's just sort of what came up that's just sort of what happened um when i was writing it but uh it did i guess i knew i needed something to really propel it into the next level um uh for the for the third act and uh and it just felt like but but it was or it's very organic that's just the way it came out that scene didn't change much it's, it was amazing. And, and then I guess uh, Pete, Peter, as a producer and actor on it, I, I feel like I, I'm going to ask you in some ways what I would ask Paul if he were here. But there was a, a the, the word elegance has come up. And I felt like he was very elegant as, as Frank. And he was so expressive um, in a natural way with his hands, you know? Mm -hmm. He has these beautiful hands. And I could, I could. <laughs> I could watch him smoke for like two hours, you know, like it was just all oh, cavity. And so I guess my question is, was that something that came up uh, from as you guys were making the movie or building the character? Or do you remember how that came about? Or was that something that he just, that just fell off the truck? One of those magical things that just sort of happens and you run with it. No, I think like we always thought that Duncan Frank was elegant, both externally and internally. He had some elegance to him that was that made him a little bit like otherworldly from where he comes from. And that was important because Beth sees that. She's the only one who sees that. And, and it ended up that Paul himself is an elegant person. He's very tall. He's very lean. And he has these pianist's hands right. that could a lot without doing much so so that that you know everything in this movie ended up a bit being a bit serendipitous actually in so many ways and uh we we really got lucky I mean absolutely it was a labor of love and we worked hard but I think the gods were with us this time you know here here I would absolutely agree with that you should be so proud of this picture I really really I'm going to tell everybody I mean I really mean it like I really enjoyed it uh, it's entertaining, it's heartfelt, it's smart. It's, I, I could go on and on, but congratulations on making an amazing movie. Thank you so much, Yuri. Thanks. And nice to meet you. Nice Thanks, to meet you. Yuri.